Well, the CBI has submitted uh, its uh, status report is uh, what we're learning at this point in time. Uh, in fact, uh, the Supreme Court has said on the progress of the investigation into the rape and murder of a woman doctor in uh, the state run Arjikar Medical College and Hospital in Kolkata. The Central Investigation uh, Bureau has reported many botch-ups in uh, the status report. As per this report, Kolkata police first told the family members that it was a case of suicide. They tried to mislead the family of the victim is what we are learning. The CBI is also trying to figure out why the hospital authorities, especially the former Rajikar Hospital principal, Sandeep Ghosh, took so much of time to inform the police after the discovery of the body. Did he have anything to hide? The CBI has been interrogating Dr. Ghosh to uh, join the dots uh, since last Friday. The questioning has been going on for a marathon, 12 to 14 hours almost every day. The body of the victim was discovered in the morning. The post-mortem uh, was performed between uh, 7 p.m. and the FIR was registered at 11.45 p.m. after post-mortem was performed. The reports also claim that the crime scene was clearly altered. They have also found missing links during the investigation. And as per the reports, the first person who discovered the victim's body is yet to be discovered and found out. The investigating officer uh, believed that once the individual who spotted the body first in is zeroed in, answers for many questions in this matter will be taken care of. But we'll talk about this nevertheless with our guests and get their perspective on what they feel about this entire matter. Nilanjan Das, TMC leader, with us on the broadcast. Mrs. Sandeep Chachra, Executive Director of Action Aid, human rights activist, also joins us on the show. Uh, NS uh, Nipanai, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court, also joins us on the program to talk more about this. Nilanjal, I'll begin with you. Well, obviously, there seems to be a lot of pressure on the TMC when it comes to this. The Supreme Court has obviously handed out a number of slaps on uh, the TMC's wrist, saying that uh, this is something that uh, the party or the government botched up. Uh, what do you make of this? The Supreme Court also said, Nilanjan, that uh, both the parties or any party should stay away from politicizing this issue and that's exactly what we see is happening the supreme court also said that uh, coercive action should not be taken against protesters who are trying to ascertain justice or make some semblance out of this horrific situation but a lot of these people uh, including suvendu adhikari have been apprehended is what we are learning what do you make of this mess in 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 uh, west bengal at this point in time Shubhendu Odhikari has been arrested because he's uh, breaking the law and order. He's not a doctor. He's not a junior doctor. What is he doing? What is he doing? He is uh, claiming that uh, if by Monday Mamta Banerjee doesn't resign, he will fire bullets. So this is this is his statement. So that's point number one. Secondly, the Supreme Court has yes, uh, the court has asked a number of questions and they have been duly replied to by the government counsel. So, uh, and some of the very important takeaways from whatever has been discussed in uh, the Supreme Court today is, uh, number one, the CBI hasn't uh, been able to make any, uh, you know, concrete headway with the case. For the last one week, the case has been with them. And they are still uh, asking questions. They are thinking that, oh, okay, things have been botched up and uh, they are helpless. They are unable to do anything. So, basically, they are just, uh, it just shows that how incompetent they are. And uh, another important point, a number of fake news have been going around that, okay, it's it's uh, it's not a uh, rape case, it's a gang rape case, and other culprits are being shielded. But today, the CBI uh, report, it says that Sanjay Rai, who was arrested within the first 12 hours, is the main culprit. The DNA uh, sampling also gives the same report. Then, uh, okay, so, and the doctors, the doctors have been asked to go and uh, join their duties. So that's a welcome uh, uh, declaration by the Supreme Court. Yes, coercive action should not be taken against any of the protesting doctors. So, and the government has not taken any action against any of the striking doctors. So they are, uh, they are protesting for their safety and security. I have full solidarity with all of them. But the people like Shubhendu Odhikari uh, and the other uh, leftist and BJP people, they are uh, trying to, you know, create this turmoil in the state and they are trying to uh, precipitate it to a law and order situation so that they can, uh, you know, get the get uh, a share of the power through the back door. All right, Kia Ghosh, spokesperson, Bharti Janta Party also joins us 
on the program. Kia Ghosh, are you there with us? I can see you. Yes, yes. yes All right. Yes. Well, Nilanjan just articulated that, uh, you know, the BJP's uh, or the BJP cell in uh, West Bengal is trying to take advantage of the situation and somehow establish, you know, their polity over the polity of uh, the TMC in West Bengal, which obviously is trying to deal with an important social issue at hand. If it was such an important social issue, then why did Mamta Banerjee come out in the open and blame Palm, Ram and Sham, which means uh, BJP, uh, the left and other allied parties. The thing is that this was today's, uh, the Shastra Bhavan Gherao was definitely a political movement, but we ensured that the social uh, awakening of people of West Bengal list on the reclaiming of night by women on 14th, on the very night when TMC hooligans attacked Arjikar to destroy evidence. And now we, it is, everything is clear because as per the Solicitor General, uh, what he stated, as per the CBI, what they stated, that the evidence has been tampered with. Why did Mamta Ban why didn't Mamta Banerjee arrest Shondeep Ghosh, the person in question, the principal? Rather, he was given a prize posting rather than given, uh, being pr provided with the punishment. Why wasn't he grilled initially? Why was the FIR launched three hours of the cremation? There were so many whys. So Bharatiya Janta Party, definitely we are standing strongly with the parents of the victim of, we are standing with the women of West Bengal who are currently facing a sense of insecurity. Having said that, I'd quickly like to mention the last 10 days. I can give you a chronology of the events which has happened. In 10 days, 11 incidents of rape, amongst which three were rape and murder, along with Obhaya, has occurred in West Bengal. And uh, to end with uh, what Nilanjan uh, uh, just said, that BJP is trying to take political mileage, could you please explain what was Mamta Banerjee doing uh, the candlelight march about Hathras? Was that a social awakening of Mamta Banerjee? If it was so, then why was she quiet about the Hashkali incident, where uh, rape was uh, minor uh, was raped, and then she died. Her body was, as always, cremated. So these are the questions which come to our mind. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's get a reaction from uh, NS. Uh, this Nipanai. is just the opening. I can I can cite with you uh, a zillion right. of other examples. I'll come back to you, Kia Ghosh. I'll come back to you. Let me also sure. take a reaction sure. from NS Nipanai, senior advocate of the Supreme Court here as well. NS Nipanai, this situation is obviously a grave one. It's opened a Pandora's box. You know, it's a reminder, a gory reminder to what happened in 2012 as well, uh, when uh, the Nirbhaya case happened. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, following the dots uh, of, uh, you know, l legal prowess and uh, prudence, uh, how far has the apple fallen from the tree when it comes to the TMC and the way, you know, this government uh, articulated what was the priority and what was not? Um, I would, uh, first would like to point out, you mentioned about the Nirbhaya case and you are aware that after that case a lot of uh, uh, amendments were brought into the IPC and these amendments now f uh, are uh, captured under the BNS, the Bharatiya Nyaya Samhita also. So when we talked about, I am stepping back a little bit over here to give this context. When the Criminal Reforms Committee was formed, the issue about the flaws in the system were highlighted and the reforms were supposed to bring about a better process to ensure better enforcement of criminal justice. When you look at the way this case has been conducted and the very fact that the Supreme Court had to take so much to cognizance is demonstrative of the lack of uh, 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 abiding by the processes that are mandated under law. And today's hearing has kind of pointed out to a lot of those uh, uh, slip-ups. And these are not mere slip-ups, these are grave. So when we talk about cases like rape like this, this is of course an uh, offence against society. But as an individual also, each one of us are affected. As individuals, as women, as, as a lawyer, I feel uh, impacted when we see cases like this. 
where we you know we are people who stand for the system and who believe in the system so if we are looking at something which is violating that process or is not following the process which is going to harm the outcome of the case then it kind of dilutes our trust in the system too not just that of the public so what is it that we are talking about here when you talk about a criminal case you have a very clear due process laid down in terms of what do you do when you come across an offense how do you give a report what is the police supposed to do immediately after that see i think we really need to sway away from the political diatribe here and move on to merely the facts and circumstances of the case and how it impacts the victim and also society at large and we need to really come together and coalesce together as a holistic single unit which is going to fight only for one thing which is for ensuring due process for ensuring that the system works properly so today's uh, cpi report and what the court has noted in terms of the timelines was that there have been lapses and these lapses have indeed affected the investigative process and it is likely to have a larger impact in terms of the outcome of the case i would not want to discuss the pros and cons of what is exactly come out of all these uh, reports but suffice it to say that it does not really behoove well in terms of posturing that the new laws have brought about changes in the system because we are not seeing much different pre 2012 and post 2023 hmm mr chatra your analysis of the situation as it stands today you know it's uh, it it would be a travesty if we continue to focus on uh, what about re at this point in time it would be a travesty if we if we say that you know we haven't learned anything from what happened in 2012 and the subsequent rapes and murders which have happened in our country even the concomitant rapes and murders which have happened mr chatra in our country along with the one that took place in kolkata well, sadly 12 years after nirbhaya vinichi uh we are talking about safety and right to life for women of women this is a sad tragic tree and today this is again after 12 years a national question under social scrutiny we heard the speakers here and the lawyer before me was speaking to it uh and you know this is 12 years after politics all kind all parties and governments and even the judiciary spate of uh, you know promises a spate of reforms as was said lots of laws new laws were installed huh? remember the posh act in 2013 the amendments to the pocso act also the amendments to the crpc and now the new bhartiya nyay samhita and the court has noted that these procedures are not being followed the honorable court today yeah. so this is the say that we don't seem to have landed in a better place in these 12 years despite all all of that uh, last 12 years of promises of social scrutiny so i think it's 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 something that we need to worry about as a society even the data points to that if you look at the data of national crime records bureau between 2012 and the last report 2021 22 the numbers haven't fallen the numbers of grave crimes against women then some may argue that these numbers have grown because of reporting but certainly the numbers haven't fallen even as i speak Uh, you have in this week itself so many rape cases and the courts are seized of those matters uh, needless to say the supreme court has made very very strong observations on uh, the question of uh, how things have happened uh, in the investigations and the delays in firs but that's not just just the supreme court itself today and yesterday the bombay high court also made a similar observation in the case in thane in maharashtra saying that it took uh, 12 hours and it took people's protests uh, in terms of registering FIRs in the case of two minor girls uh, and you know one of them statement still not recorded as i understand in the case of pune which is again being re relooked at uh, the police seems to have sided with the perpetrator so i, I think there is something that we need to worry about hugely of of where we are going and this is not a unique instance we are discussing i i think that's something that i want to point out i also want to say that the court very strongly said today observe today that we should not politicize and i think earlier you were speaking to it with nilanjan ji and sure enough we should not politicize but but if you look at it uh, politics or patriarchy are always 
played over dead bodies of women and also the victims and, and you know survivors in this question and that's exactly what we see ha happening and i think all the political parties really need to introspect abhinidji i would like to say uh, recently there was a data released from the association of democratic reforms and the national election watch and they say that out of uh, the 4000 or 700 or around that numbers of mlas and mps on our land 151 of them have cases against them crimes of uh, crimes against women related cases 16 of them are grave cases uh, so you know cases of uh, rape registered against them so i think there's something that we need to worry about introspect as political parties as societies as the law enforcement agencies the the uh, supreme court earlier uh, sort of orders for the formation of the national task force are indeed welcome i mean it relates of course to hospitals medical professionals medical workers a range of categories involved with hospitals and that's really welcome because we do know it's a dire need we do know that uh, you know the the question of gender based violence and an action plan on gender based violence is direly needed solely needed but i i think i want to go beyond and i want to say that you know this kind of a national task force should extend to beyond the hospitals because if you look at the question of women and work if you look at the question of women workers across of our land particularly a large majority of them are in the informal sector and look at their experiences look at their experiences which intersect with their identities not just as gender of course but of caste class of religion of ethnicities and what is the kind of lack of security safety and protection do do they face uh, in the social space in the workspace but also in relation with institutions which are meant to protect them hospitals uh, police courts i think there's a whole range of things uh, that we need to look be looking at introspecting in in view of what is needed a social huge social progress i think uh, just it's not just the question of implementation of law i think that is entirely and solely needed a very very strict impl implementation of existing laws sensitization of personnel around it and accountability of personnel around it but recently i was hearing the honorable prime minister speak at the independence day address he made two points one on the question of invoking women's safety second on the question of invoking institutions in the public space uh, whether these are panchayats and others uh, he, he mentioned some lacks of institutions for invoking them to undertake two reforms i think those two dots need to be connected that is where we are today i think the first and the foremost reform uh, that all of these institutions whether it's the urban local bodies or the panchayats or higher institutions which have jurisdictions over people they must ensure freedom mm. from fear freedom from uh, you know all kind of abuse freedom from all kind of discrimination for all the women within right, their sir. jurisdiction on an online and i think it's a huge thing and i just want to make a point here to end uh, and i want to say that a tectonic shift is indeed needed a cultural culturally tectonic shift is needed uh, in terms of ensuring women have equal and safe futures mm. we need to we need to consign patriarchy to the dustbin it belongs to so that's how i would like to see well this said, whole sir. debate unraveling thank you well said well said we need to consign patriarchy to the dustbin and nilanjan uh, in fact uh, you know tmc member of parliament including uh, mawa mitra have taken pride many a time saying that uh, you know it is one party uh, that believes in inclusion it uh, believes in diversity and has also the maximum number of women mps that are represented by a single party in the parliament do you think by that standard and 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 by that uh, benchmark uh, your party the tmc has a you know bigger responsibility of handling this case correctly and coherently yes of course i completely agree with you yes our leader mamta banerjee she is completely committed to the cause of the women and uh, as you, as you rightly pointed out that we have the maximum uh, percentage of uh, women elected members so that's a, a fact and kudos to mamta banerjee for that and we are committed to the safety and security of women of bengal period and whatever has happened we want we demand justice and we need the justice from the cbi and the highest court of the land so having said that i just want to uh, respond to a few points raised by kiyadi she said ki why mamta banerjee uh, talked about bam ram and sham because these are the people these are the people who are uh, um, spreading fake news they have uh, you know they have come together and they are trying to complicate the uh, situation by bringing in a number of uh, fake news they are spreading uh, voice clips and everything today also 
today also there is the question of I strongly object to whatever Nilanjan is saying. No, no, no. Let him finish. finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. Kia ji, 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 one second. I'll come to you. You will be the next one to respond. Let him finish his point. I'll come to you, ma'am. Just three points. I'm just responding to you. I'm not adding anything. So this is the first point that they are spreading fake news. We have a number of BJP handles. BJP, uh, I myself is the uh, State General Secretary of the ITN SMB of our party. And I can tell you uh, that a number of BJP handles, including Mr. Amit Malviya, the national in charge, are spreading fake news. That's point number one. She said, why Mamta Banerjee did not respond to the Hashkali issue? Why are you even bringing in this uh, uh, topic, uh, Kiyadi? Because Hashkali has also been monitored by CBI. We don't know. The, C the highest court of the land should also seek a, a status report on that case. Third point, you talked about a number of other, other rapes in Bengal. Let me tell you, in the last 10 days, we have had 900 cases of crimes against women in, in India. What is the central government doing? Why, why is Mr. Modi not speaking? He has not spoken on the Manipur issue. He has not spoken on the, any of the double engine states where we have seen heinous crimes against women. So you have a lot of answering to do. So rather than questioning, you should look within. You should look at the elephant in your own room. Thank you. All right, Kiaji, now you can respond. Yeah, firstly, uh, Nilanjan on the wide, wide, wider prospect perspective and uh, from the water view about it and from the WhatsApp University. No, it's not a water about saying, BJP, Wait, let me finish. He let, said let BJP finish, is spreading fake news. But on the contrary, we are seeing that it is the new passion, newly found passion of Kolkata police who are on a spree of sending notices of notices. Who does to Why? them? Because who does to because them? Who does? Next time, you know, we'll who does to them? From some other state. Nilanjan, let her make a point. Nilanjan. Fake news. I you are, are propagating fake news. You, you should be ashamed. You should hang your head in shame. Nilanjan, one second. One second, You should hang your head in shame. You should hang your head in shame. You are a fake news peddler. Nilanjan, you, you Nilanjan, I'll have to mute you. Peddler. Nilanjan, I'll have to mute you. I want Kia Ghosh to make a point. Nilanjan, I'll have to mute you if you continue. Kia ji, continue to make your point. Calm down, please make your point. He had to delete the post. If he was propagating a fake video, a false video. So this is the kind of water beauty so called general secretary of some regional parties talking about. Point number one. Point number two is which is fake news. I'd like to ask, is it not true that the police earlier said that a case of unnatural death has been registered? Is it not true that the parents were made to wait for three hours? Is it not true that the permission was done following which after almost three hours the FIR was lodged and that too, not by the uh, police, not by the uh, hospital uh, uh, administrative uh, officers. She, she's, lying the she's lying on national television. She's lying. Okay, lying. you can counter her. You can counter her when she's done. Nilanjan, you can counter her. One second, one second. Kiaji, if you're done, if you, Kiaji, if you're done, Kiaji, if you're done, I, wa I want Nilanjan to respond. One second, one second. She is lying. One second, Nilanjan, let her finish. I'll come to you only. Pull up his mask. Pull up his mask of life. Thirdly, very importantly, why did Mamta Banerjee not interrogate Chandip Ghosh? Rather, he, she, he was given a uh, prize posting to CNNC. And I don't know, uh, there, there are rumors, I don't know whether it is true. It is coming to our uh, knowledge through several news media that Chandip Ghosh, this person in question, he has been appointed as the OSD of the Shwasta Bhavan. If this is this is not travesty of justice. So tell me which is not true. Kolkata police and TMC and uh, certain uh, so-called feminist MPs of TMC, they are being... Yeah, okay, Kia Ji, I want, I want, I want Nilanjan to respond. Okay, all right. Kia, Kia Ji, one second, you've made your point. Nilanjan, quickly, please respond. Yes, uh, so regarding the OSD appointment, she should show the uh, appointment letter, point number one. Secondly, she talked about the... Okay, uh, I think you, you are short of hearing. I said it's... 
as per the rumors i am not no, sure no why are you why are you talking you so are talking about rumors on national television Wait, this, this is, is not your twitter all right this one, second, one, one, second. one second one second okay i'll have to mute both body. of you if this I'm continues kia ji kia ji one second kia ji kia ji you had your chance you said what you had to i gave you extra time as well let him respond we also have other panelists who are waiting to conclude with their remarks nilanjan 10 seconds is what you have please let me finish if if the bjp thinks that mr shondeep ghosh is a criminal why has cbi not arrested him what is the status report you tell me that instead of howling on national television you should say what the cbi has done first tell me why didn't your police grill him first why? answer this to me why, why didn't your you police are, grill him you why? are holding him responsible you are holding him responsible Okay, okay, that's a valid question. I also want to get a response from N S Dipanai. N S Dipanai, what do you what do you make of uh, you know so this slugfest that we have just endured? Uh, obviously, you know the Bengal police did make a number of mistakes. What the CBI is doing right now, traditionally, it should have been done by the police. Do you think there was an element of hand in glove there? Well, that would be speculative of me to speak about. I don't have the facts of the case in hand. I just wanted to bring in a perspective here, however, based on my experience in terms of handling uh, sensitive cases that arise within institutions. Unfortunately, the immediate reaction of any institution is to protect themselves rather than to uh, ensure justice for the victims. I feel that this is a uh, this is something that uh, this as a process should change. this may come about either through sensitization or as we usually say samadana beda danda if sama doesn't work we jump to danda so maybe we need some kind of a, uh, a sanction to follow inaction by an institution where they are mandated to report and here it is a hospital so even if you get an injury case in the hospital there are very specific rules and procedures for how you are expected to report it so hospital is fully aware of how and in what manner a police report is to be filed more so when it comes to a natural deaths so i would really think again and i would want to emphasize this why are we hearing about what a state machinery or the central machinery has done or has not done why is it the other we are seeing so much of adversarial approach between two institutions which are both mandated to protect us the citizen us the individual why can't they work together to see justice being delivered i find it extremely disconcerting that two institutions which have been brought into the fray intended for them to provide justice will be busy talking about their own protection and why i mentioned the first part about the institution and this is if you look at the approach it's the same if an institution would rather put itself ahead of a victim if a state machinery would put itself ahead of the victim if a central machinery will put itself ahead of the victim then where would the victim go so we really need all these systems which are meant for us the individual to all right. work to okay ma'am all right we have a paucity of time i'm going to quickly take a response from mr chatra as well he's been waiting his turn patiently mr chatra 20 seconds sir so just quick two things i think the sensational approach to justice must stop and uh, i i think the point is as a citizen as a woman of this land what protection do i have women have been asking this question for how long do we have to wait irrespective of which state it is in number one number two i think this whole uh, welcome move of restraining the which the supreme court said today restraining any state in terms of its action on peaceful protesters is indeed welcome and i think it'll go far beyond this particular state or this particular instance as we know those who are defending or fighting for sexual uh, against sexual harassment uh, they face considerable backlash and uh, this backlash is institutionalized we have seen it across states and not only is it institutionalized it's also criminalized so i think this kind of a sort of welcome observation today will be quoted long and will be used long uh, in terms of decriminalization of protests in terms of peaceful protests in terms of accountability of the states and the state and the center in asking the right questions which people are today thank you so much all right for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon